Hey everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to my new Let's Play series. As you can tell from the title, this is Monster Prom, and this was actually recommended to me by a friend of mine who is a big fan of dating sims like I am. So she's played this before, said it was a really good one, and recommended it for my channel, so I figured why not give it a shot. And hopefully this will go better than my last dating sim Let's Play, which was Doki Doki Literature Club, which if you guys don't know, I couldn't even finish because I got too freaked out by it. So despite the fact that Monster is in the title, I don't think I'm going to be having that same issue. And um, as with all of these games, I like to try and go into them as blind as possible because I just think it's more fun that way. So without further ado, let's get into the game and I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, okay. So this was what, something that I did know about this game and it's pretty cool is that you can play it multiplayer, but it's just me today. So we're just gonna go ahead and pick one player. Oh, okay. Uh, short game around 30 minutes, full game around 60. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be uh, a pretty short uh, let's play. Um, maybe what I'll do is let's try the short game and if you guys do like this and you'd like to maybe see me do multiple tries at it and try and romance different characters, I can kind of do like one shots of each character. So we'll go ahead with the short game. Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Oh wow, jeez, man, this game, right off the bat, is offering quite a few options here. Um, okay, well I'm gonna be a girl, and I'm liking both of their designs, but I'm kind of leaning towards her. Okay, and I can choose name, of course, I'm gonna go with, you know, kind of boring, we'll just go with my name, as I always do. And you can even choose the pronoun. I've gotta say, right off the bat, very impressed by the amount of choice you have. Sweet! And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. <laughs> Man, these, uh... Some of them are a little bit old, I think, for, uh, for prom. Isn't this like high school? You'd think that they'd be like, you know, 16, 17. Uh, Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. <sighs> <laughs> Liam De uh, Lioncourt, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay! Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, a mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. <laughs> I gotta say, I am loving their designs already. I'm leaning right away towards... I like Miranda. And I'm digging Polly. I like all of them, but I love that they're kind of like the standard tropes. You know, you've got like the party girl, you've got like the, the jock, you've got kind of like the goth kid. Anyway, let's keep moving on. It was clear, it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. All right, welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. I am liking this game already. Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. Oh, that's pretty cool. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Oh my gosh, I love this! Okay, what is your spirit emoji? Snowman, because that motherfucker is in the middle of a blizzard and he's fucking smiling. He doesn't give a fuck about blizzards and he has a kick-ass hat. Octopus emoji, best animal on earth. I know five mixed drinks, three drug cocktails, and 17 sex positions that involve one or several octopi. 
Caucasian guy with a turban because fuck stereotypes. Oh my god, I man, this is a little bit more vulgar than I was expecting, but I'm digging it. Let's go with the snowman. <laughs> so bold. <laughs> I would not consider myself a bold person, but okay. Uh, if you could put a curse on your worst enemy, what would it do? You can't rely on the effectiveness of a curse. I prefer to take care of my enemies the old-fashioned way by exposing them to unsafe doses of radiation over the course of several years. I'd curse them to fall in love with a wonderful person and be happily married for years before they realize all this time their partner was a wild panther in disguise. Then the panther viciously devours my enemy. Classic. The curse of always meeting obnoxious people at parties who are super into new fad diets that feel the need to explain them in detail. Um... Well, you know what? The other two are a little harsh, so let's go with this one. You find a genie in a bottle. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? Infinite confetti, a rainbow you can eat, his friendship. Before asking for anything, you try to negotiate up to the, uh, up to the standard three wishes. I didn't ask for anything. I drink the genie from the bottle. I can grant my own wishes. Uh... Him not to be so cliche, genie and wishes so mainstream. I'm guessing this this one's definitely related to the uh, that like hipster vampire guy. Um, not that I'm trying. I'm gonna answer honestly. So let's go with the before asking for anything, you try to negotiate. Oh, okay. So I'm going for the snake lady apparently, or at least that's a that's an answer that the snake lady would enjoy. Oh, okay. Let's go. Okay. Oh, so I can just, okay, I can just choose to go, I guess it really depends on where I think the characters would be, right? So let's look at my stats. Okay, so my creativity is not great. Um, fun, apparently not great either, but I'm high in smarts, boldness, and charm. Okay, so let's guess. So the uh, werewolf guy is probably going to be at the gym. Uh, I'm guessing the, uh, what's his face? The vampire is probably going to be at the library. The auditorium, I would guess that the poly girl would be there. Uh, outdoors, <laughs> bathroom. Yeah, I'll just hang out in the bathroom. Um, you know what? Let's go. I'm going to go to the auditorium. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the uh, muses themselves had descended to give you, figuratively, oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. Oh, I guess I should go with, like, what my stats are, which um, might not have been the greatest because my creativity is only three. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. Oh, there we go. Okay, so maybe that was good for me then. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just clicking on things and uh, seeing what happens. Well, there we go. Now I'm a little bit more well-rounded. Uh, you spot Vera and Polly discussing something. You've got to get in on this conversation. It's bound to be something nasty. Hi. <laughs> Yay, there's... Okay, I think I'm going to go for her. Hey, 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 hey. What? Are you going to that party tonight at Dale the Mummy's Crypt? The dog star is aligned with Venus or something, so his parents are beings of pure energy for the weekend. He's got the place entirely to himself. I might stop by. Yay! Okay, so listen, Scott's gonna be there too, and I totally want to spike his drink. Not bad. Now I'm interested. What are you thinking? Laxatives or Viagra? Ugh. <laughs> Gross. Lame. I was thinking something fun, like shrooms. Mediocre. Shrooms won't even dissolve in his drink, you idiot. You there, back me up on this. What do you think we should put in his drink? <laughs> yeah, make it something fun, like like shrooms. Oh. Um. Do do do. All right, Moonroot, it induces werewolf transformations. He'll be a literal party animal. So I'm guessing Polly would definitely enjoy that answer. Do you want to make him a laughing stock? Use that flower that makes a person fall in love with the first thing they see. We can make him fall in love with a chair or a houseplant. Uh, okay, well, since I'm kind of leaning towards, although, uh, although based on my answers, it seemed like I would do well going after Vera. But for this one, let's go with Polly. So let's go with the Moonroot. Aww. What? Dang, okay, that didn't work out so well. Ugh, don't you know anything about animals? Dogs and cats always bark when ghosts and witches are around. We won't be able to shut him up all night. Jeez, neither of them like that. I'm not doing so well. First choice and I'm failing already. His constant discordant howling is totally going to clash with the DJ's constant discordant howling. If you like dogs so much, why don't you plan your own party? Later! At the kennel. Oof. 
Have some respect for the- ouch, for the DJ and his very serious adult career. You lose minus two charm and minus one smarts. Wow, this game is harsh! Wow, 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 wow. I might not do oh, so well with this. Okay, so I can choose to sit. Well, you know what? I'm not doing so well with Polly, so I think my next choice was going to be uh, Miranda. I think that's her name. Alright, let's go here. You arrive at your chosen table to find Vera looking uh, askance at Miranda's lunch. A single and very suspicious looking apple. Miranda, honey, your apple seems to be pulsating with unhealthy purple light. Oh, I love their clothes. I love Miranda's design so much. Oh, I'm sure it's just your imagination. Ugh. It also has a skull on it, and it smells like lighter fluid. I don't think it's for eating. Of course it's for eating. It's a perfectly standard poison apple. You know, the sort that puts a princess to sleep for a hundred years? You literally just admitted it's poison. I know, I know, and I always said I wouldn't be the kind of princess who eats a poisoned apple. But how else will I find a prince to wake me up with true love's kiss and live happily ever after with me? Girl, we need to have a little talk about feminism. You back me up on this. Tell her she doesn't need to poison herself for the sake of a man. Oh, let's hope I do better on this one. Uh, let's go with the first one. Yeah! Although, it's not quite the girl I was going for, but... She seemed to enjoy that too. A marvelous idea. If the princes are asleep, I shall be able to assess them fully before making a selection. Come to think of it, I suppose this is why the princess prefers sleeping damsels to begin with. God, royal marriages. The whole thing is like a fucking meat market. In my kingdom, it's more of a fish market. <laughs> no comment needed. In any case, you two have truly opened my eyes. I shall be sending poison apples to all nearby princes uh, forthwith. Miranda gets to work poisoning all her suitors. Vera is very impressed with your enlightened opinions on gender and poison. Okay, well, that went a little bit better, but now I'm just like, oh man, who the heck do I go for? Let's go. Okay, I don't know who this, like, this person here is, but let's go to the gym, because I'm curious about that. Money. Oh, welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats, shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures, even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So take a look. Okay, so it's a shop. Uh, let's see what we got here. A fake badass tattoo. Okay. Oh, I love that. Too poor for this. Alright, well, let's stick with what I can afford. Sexy fake Latin accents. A Russian novel with insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Okay, well, that seems to be that dude, um, the vampire who I'm not really all that interested in, so we'll skip that. <laughs> Crafting your arch requires years of hard work. Okay, so that will obviously increase my creativity, which is my lowest stat other than fun. Remember when these used to be cool? Now they aren't, but they're so ridiculous they're still fun in their own twisted way. Okay, so these are interesting, so they're possible events. Oh my goodness. Alright, well, let's try... Oh my goodness. Um, I can only buy literally one thing. <sighs> okay, let's try the corpse. No refunds. I don't know what I have just done, but okay. I'm kind of just going into this let's go. the seat of my pants here. So I've got the corpse, but I have no idea what to actually do with it. I feel like I might have just wasted my money. Okay, so... Let's see what we got here. So, I guess it's based on... Well, let's check. My highest thing is boldness. Uh, let's try going to... But then I gotta think about the characters that I want to romance. Eh, what the hell. Let's go to... No, no, I want to increase my skills. I want to get... So let's go with the creativity. No, let's do char- oh my god, I'm so- I'm like so indecisive. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirits, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. Plus two charm, and I will proceed to lose it because I will make a wrong choice when talking to people. While doing all that, you've been carrying your newly acquired corpse as if, as if it were a totally normal thing to do. 
but some people seem to think otherwise. Oh no, it's the four most hateful people in school. Ugh. Why are you carrying a corpse, idiot? <sighs> what a shameful display of distaste. <laughs> yeah, what a noob. Carrying around corpses is for noobs. <sighs> Ooh, a corpse. I love corpses. Also, I'm super drunk. Okay, the three most hateful people in school and Polly. As a school social elite, we disapprove of this. I'm the head of the hierarchy, and I can't condone, condone such stupidity under our domain. In the taste of the hierarchy, and I don't appreciate such uh, pervile use of a corpse. Also, lesser known fact about corpses, they smell. I'm the fist of the hierarchy, and I want to punch you because punching people is what I do. Hi! I'm Polly. Also, I'm like super drunk, so whatever Vera says. Yikes, despite your disregard for stupid social conventions and school hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. Maybe because that's what this game is about. When you brought this corpse, they totally told you it was a fashion accessory and that they were absolutely not just trying to dispose of a body. But now you're starting to feel they might have fooled you. No time to lose. How can, can how can you convince them that the corpse is actually a very hot fashion accessory? Alright, trivia fact about fashion accessories. Most of them are worn on your head. Quick, put the, horps, uh, put the corpse on your head. Shallow social creatures respond only to status. Rip the brand logo off the most high-end accessory you own and put it on the corpse. Alright, let's try that. Uh, you quickly rip the logo off and uh, another piece of clothing you have with you and put it on the corpse. <sighs> Wait, look, the corpse is actually a McDonald's? Damn, you're so poor, your best piece of clothing is actually a McDonald's bag you sometimes use as a hat. So you were going to eat this corpse? Ugh. Disgusting. Fast food companies, am I right? They're always finding new lows. Give me that. Damien takes your corpse and bites its arm. He chews for a while. Yeah. Hmm, you're completely right. It is disgusting. No seasoning and super dry. I bet it's not even gluten-free. So immoral. I always suspected Rose was into fast food and necrof uh, necrophagia. You have poor eating habits written all over your face. <laughs> Still drunk. <laughs> and so they leave alone with your corpse. This is the worst day ever. <laughs> Also, Damien was right. The corpse is kind of under-seasoned and dry. You lose minus two fun and minus one charm. Dang, I'm not doing good. I'm not gonna have a date at this point. Let's go. Uh, well, I mean, I'm seeming to do well with uh, with Miranda, so let's stick with her. You come across Damien sneering at Miranda's elaborate silverware spread while her eating serfs chow down obediently at a neighboring table. I still don't get why you collect all those stupid forks and spoons and shit. What a noob! I mean, even the knives don't really look that deadly. Silly boy, the silverware is not for killing. Things can be for stuff other than killing. That's lame as hell, it's basically useless. I mean, you don't even eat, your serfs do it for you. Well, of course they do. But they're not using any of your silverware. Naturally they aren't, serfs must eat with their hands, as befits the lower classes. Ooh, I don't know if I want to hang out with her anymore. So you're saying the silverware collection has no practical purpose? Things have practical purposes? These two could go round and round like this forever, unless you say something to resolve the dispute. Uh, Damien's right. Maybe it is time you start murdering people with your silverware. Lay off Miranda, Damien. What about your collection of exotic corpses? Yeah, that's different. Those corpses are useful. Useful for what? For... For holding down important documents. What important documents? Documents about very important... Ugh, fine. I guess I don't use the stupid corpses for anything. I just stack them in a shed and occasionally dress them up in silly costumes. There, are you happy? Extremely. Whatever, I'm gonna go play with my corpses. You stay behind with Miranda to admire her collection. She even teaches you how to use the romance fork. Smooth. Well, there we go. She definitely seems to want, be the one I should try and romance. I liked how I jumped when it was going to be Polly, and now it's, uh, it's Miranda. Okay, well, I have no money, so there's no point in me going to see her. Um, so, uh, let's try and get my fun up. Can I get my fun up? Oh, yeah, I guess I could get money, too. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's try and get myself some money. That day, you spend some time on the library's PCs, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose minus 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? And you gain plus 2 money. 
Uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough to uh, buy anything, but anyway. You see, Miranda, Vera, and Polly gather around a table covered in books. Could they be studying? No way. I hereby call this meeting of the boss-ass bitches to order. I've gathered all prior school yearbooks, so we have a clear list of everyone we're better than. Always the same with you. Wow, what a great use of your time. Who said that? Oh great, it's the coven. What are you three doing here? Um, studying? Because this is a library at a school? Gasp! Spies! Villains! Impersonating! Us! What? What? Don't you see, Vera? These three are obviously our evil twins. The middle one is mean and bossy like you. What are you talking about, Polly? We go to class with you. You would know if uh, you three don't didn't spend all your time doing stupid and mostly illegal stuff. I won't fall for your tricks, evil Vera. Are you implying the original Vera isn't kind of evil herself? And look, Vera, the one on the right has glasses, just like Polly. I need these to see. And see, she has dark skin. She's clearly dark Polly. Whoa, Polly, just no. Oh my goodness, bitches is only one letter away from <gasps> witches. Good lord. Say, would you three mind studying somewhere else? You're upsetting my minions. Never. Good grades are the backbone of a bright future. We need all this knowledge to save the world from the big bad. Oh boy, if you don't figure out a way to get the coven out of here, you might have to break up a brawl. Any ideas? <laughs> Whip out your rooster. Witches hate roosters. Uh, chop up all the study tables with a big axe. Uh, let's, uh, let's go with the axe. So bold, yeah. Thinking fast, you grab the designated library axe and get to work. Fun fact, all rooms at Spooky High School must contain at least one axe due to lobbying by the axe murderers of America. What? Why? Damn the AMA. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> looks like someone had a little accident. No, no, I think she's doing that entirely on purpose. Well, on purpose or not, it looks like there's no place to study anymore, is there, ladies? Fine, we're leaving, but you haven't seen the last of us. See? That's exactly what our evil duplicates would say. No, uh, we just- we have class with you guys next period. Did you forget? Class? Who has time for that? We're forming a secret society. Okay, whatever. I guess we won't see you later then. You probably will see them later. Or will you? Ugh, who cares? You gain plus two charm and plus one boldness either way. Heck yes. Alright, uh, why don't I get myself, try and get myself some more money. Hey, stranger. Oh, the only thing I can afford is a tampon. <laughs> I have no idea who would enjoy that. I guess the vampire would. He could use it as, like, a tea bag or something. Uh, no. Aww. Dang, I was hoping... Oh, no! Aw, oh, that was a waste of my time. Shoot, I was hoping... Let's go. I'd be able to go somewhere else. Well, okay, so I've got to be very careful about where I choose to go because I've only got one shot at something. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to be lame. I'm going to stick with Miranda because I think she's the one I have the best chance with. Vera is about to lift a glass of scotch to her immaculately painted uh, lips. You can drink whatever at this school, apparently. When Miranda screams, Stop! Don't drink that! What? Why not? The scotch costs more than most cars. Has your... Uh, has your taster tried it yet? What taster? You don't have a taster? What if your drink is poisoned by someone jealous of your good looks and royal title? Oh, I think I've been in a bad influence on Miranda. She seems to <laughs> wanting to go around and poison everybody. Listen, Miri, I only drink four things. Scotch, red wine, the tears of my enemies, and straight up poison. You drink poison on purpose? Miranda, my hair is venomous snakes. You think poison actually harms me? Well, well, you should still have a taster. What if someone puts really spicy hot sauce in your drink? Or, or poison? Ugh. What do I have to do to get you to drop this? Simple. Hire a taster. Fine. Any volunteers? This might just be the big break you've been looking for. You raise your hand, and when Vera picks you, you... Uh, oh, well, <laughs> I'm not really... I don't think Vera cares for me very much, so let's do the thing that Miranda would enjoy. What are you doing? That bottle costs as much as the first Apollo mission. How do you feel, Royal Taster? Are you poisoned? Well, you're not poisoned, but you're pretty fucking wasted. You give all the Mirandas you can see two big thumbs up. A job well done. Now Vera is sure not to be poisoned. Well, yeah, because there's no scotch left to be poisoned by. 
Don't listen to her. You did well. Come with me. I have some other beverages. You simply must verify for safety. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be so much as a date as I'm just going to be like her servant. You spend the rest of the night getting wasted on expensive liquors at Miranda's place. Courtship never tasted so good. Well, there we go. See new of, uh, I don't, I think I might actually get a date with Miranda at this point. Let's go. Man, this is just flying by. I can't believe I'm already, already almost done. Okay, I've got to be careful about my choice here. Do, do, do. Let's get my creativity up. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you are struck by the lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate nickname for yourself. You tell everyone to call you by it. Also known as one of the seven most douchebag-ish uh, movies, uh, sorry, moves in the world. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. Quite the feat, you gain plus two creativity. We the devs dare you to actually come up with a nickname for yourself and ask the other players to call you by that name until the end of this run. Well, I would if I had other players to play with, but I'm here all by my lonesome. You see Miranda hovering in the hallway, whistling to herself and checking out her reflection in her scales. Why, hello there, Rose. How funny and random to see you here entirely by coincidence near your locker. Ah, she's into me. Seeing as how we've been getting on so well lately, I have decided to afford you the honor and privilege of taking me to the seahorse races. You can pick me up after school today and bring me an assortment of flowers and chocolates as a gift. You're welcome. Oh man, a chance to buy shit for Miranda and take her on an outing you have no interest in? Sounds amazing. Let's rock. You go to the horse races and look for Miranda. She's wearing a beautiful and intricate horse race hat. Unfortunately, a sudden gust blows the hat away. You could swear you could hear the wind whispering, Not enough budget! But it surely must have been your imagination. No, my hat! Hey Rose, I'm here. Hi, look at this. Daddy always gives me money when I go to the seahorse races. It isn't much, of course, only plus, holy sh- 300,000 money, but it should still make things more fun to bet. Of course, nothing would sour this lovely date faster than picking a losing horse, so I'll put this daunting choice entirely on you. Oh, crap. How should we choose the winning seahorse so that this day goes down in memory as a pleasurable experience, rather than a sign we should never speak again? Ugh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Yikes. No pressure. But no worries, you know the perfect method for choosing winning racehorses. Oh boy, why watch people ride seahorses when you could be riding me? No, literally though, get me a saddle and let's enter the race. Ride you? Why, this is an option I'd never even contemplated. I've never heard of one person riding another before. Uh, Miranda, bless. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned from years of helping daddy suppress peasant uprisings, is that if you want something done right, have your servants do it themselves. But since they're not here, I suppose it makes you my servant. Let's do it. Let's win the race ourselves. So I wasn't too far off when I said that she considered me a servant. The two of you sneak down to the stables and quickly forge the necessary paperwork to enter the race. At the sound of a mergun shot, you and your fellow seahorses are off and running. You run as fast as someone who is hoping to earn a prom date with a beautiful mermaid princess, which is very, very fast. So fast, in fact, you somehow managed to outrun over a dozen seahorses who have been training their whole lives for this moment, undoubtedly crushing their hopes and dreams. And the winner is, booms the announcer, Princess Miranda, riding Rose. Woo! I have secured that date. Oh, huzzah, what a glorious victory this is, asserting my superiority over my subjects, not only by birthright, but also by sheer talent. It does seem like you did most of the heavy lifting, as it were, since Miranda isn't particularly heavy. But why spoil this beautiful moment? This has been a perfectly wonderful outing. I should very much like to ride you again sometime. If only she knew what she was saying. Still, that's better than not. You gain plus two money from the bet and plus one charm from the being ridden... Eh, from being ridden by a princess. Man, we're at what happened to that 300,000 money? Okay, well, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious at this point where you are definitely going to pick Miranda. None of them. Da, 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 da. Come on, Let's she's, go. she's got to say yes, right? You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Yuck! Ugh, my sisters told me I could get diseases if I dated commoners. Stuff like crabs or poverty. I, what? I must decline. Ugh, disgusting! Damn, you're bad at interacting with people. 
To repent for the sins of making such bad choices, you were forced to walk around the school in the nude, accompanied by a nun who chanted shame over and over while ringing a big bell. Classic. What? Wow. Even after helping her win that race, I thought for sure that I had, I'd secured it. Dang. Well, that happened. <laughs> and I didn't even go to the prom. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Miranda used her vast surf knowledge to get a job at handpicking the best surfs for other people. Unsurprisingly, she ended up leaving her surfs to do the work. Vera really built the uh, Oberlin Empire into endless greatness. They own a shameless number of companies. It's known that they're also into a lot of sketchy businesses. But no one does anything about it. I mean, who in the hell would try to stop Vera Oberlin? Polly graduated at doing lots of Aya Huska, and now she appears to people hallucinating to act as their spirit animal. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Well, dang, that was, uh... <laughs> that was quick. I mean, I know they literally said it was only a half hour, but, uh... I am not gonna let it end here. We are gonna give it another go, so maybe I'll just do, like, a quick run-through and see if I can, like, try and go after Miranda again and use the knowledge that, um, that I learned and try and do better. I just- I still can't believe I wasn't able to get- like, she seemed to, like, like me, so I don't know what I did wrong. This is a lot tougher than I thought it was gonna be. All right, you know what? Let's give it another go. So now I'm wondering if I should do this to try and, like, um, lean towards answers I think that Miranda would like. Oh, I love this! So it, you even get different questions with each new start. That's that's really cool. All right, which, an, which inanimate object do you think would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend, provided you went criminally insane? A dildo? An ATM? A human-sized pillow depicting a character created by myself. As a matter of fact, I have all the needed paperwork and I'm only waiting for the conservative narrow-minded laws of our country to finally step forward into waifu and husbando territory, as was clearly intended by God. Well, considering that, uh, you know, I'm dating a princess, we gotta go with the ATM, right? She's gonna enjoy someone who's wealthy. You build a hundred-foot statue commemorating an event so that in a thousand years, archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? Your least favorite political figure being devoured by rabid rhin rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. Glorious instant when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. That mind-blowing twist in your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike all those boring stuff they show on the news. Your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. Anything on fire, or a weapon, a weapon on fire, a silly toy that makes silly noises, a pony, always a pony. Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sorts, the abstract concept of gratefulness, the head of their fiercest enemy. Let's go with a pony. Yeah, I knew she'd like that. All right, Miranda, well, I'm coming for you. All right, so let's check out. So there we go. Now my uh, stats are a little bit different than they were before. Creativity, not great, but I got lots of, I got hella money, so that's good. So do I try and get more money or do I try and increase like my skills? Uh, let's go, let's try and see if I can increase my charm a little bit. You see Miranda and Vera chatting away, their eyes gleaming in the gleam of the scheming. Hey, you. Crowd surfs isn't doing nearly as well as I thought it would. Oh, if it isn't Rose. Greetings, fellow Would you classmate. like to be a customer? Once upon a time, surfs were only for the rich and fabulous. Da, 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 like Vera and myself. 
But now, thanks to our app, CrowdSurfs, you too can have your very own crowdfunded surf. The app is being generously funded by my royal family, who wish for everyone to experience the joys of royalty <laughs> and get richer off it. I think our business might be failing because the surfs are simply not of high enough quality to maintain custom, uh, customer interest. Uh. The surfs need to have more enthusiasm for their jobs. We need to recruit from the right locations. <laughs> Don't be absurd. If there's one thing being royalty has taught me, and that's definitely more than one, it's that you can trick anyone into doing anything, as long as you give them the right incentives. But why not start with the easily manipulated in the first place? Rose, what do you think? Okay, well, I mean, obviously, since I'm trying to go after Miranda, I'm going to lean towards what she says. Miranda has a point. Everyone wants to win. Host an unpaid labor competition where the prize is doing more unpaid labor. <laughs> Aw, not so creative. Ooh, what a delightful idea. But she seemed to like it. And Vera kind of seemed to like it, too. It's true that for those who are not born to fame, uh, gaining it or watching others gain it is a favorite pastime. I'll have my press agent advertise it as the hottest competition since Monstropolis's next top terror. And so who wants to be an unpaid laborer is born. People compete their hardest at various demeaning tasks and the winner gets to continue to perform them as a surf. You're not worthy. Oh man, I am like, I love their outfits and their designs so much. There you are, you wretched little saboteur. Ugh. Our unpaid labor competition has been completely upstaged by the preparation industry surrounding it. Oh god, even when I think I've picked the right answers, I haven't. It's almost as if the results of the competition don't even matter anymore. There are labor competition prep programs starting for middle schoolers. The people running these unpaid labor tutoring programs are making far more than we are. Ugh, disgraceful. You must be in cahoots with them. Are they giving you a cut of their profits? Ugh. Man, it's like every choice is the wrong choice. You try to deny this, but the girls have already stormed haughtily off. Worst. Ugh, you lose minus two creativity and minus one fun. I wonder if I'm wondering if I'm ever going to get like a good ending. Alright. Uh, I suppose I could try and buy something now, but let's uh, let's try and make up for what I did there. Okay, so this is the same conversation we had before. Noob. And I know exactly what thing to say to make her like me. <laughs> I I just, I love the thing where he's like, okay, fine. I, I just stack them in a shed and dress them up in silly costumes. Alright, I think I'm gonna have to try and romance him at some point. I thought for sure after that conversation he would enjoy when I had the corpse, but nobody liked the corpse, I guess. Alright, hopefully I redeemed myself with that. I, you know, did a bad, but then I did a good. Alright, now let's try and buy something. Oh no, I'm earning things. Right, because uh, the store wasn't there. The cat lady isn't there. Oh, uh, that day you spend some time in the library's PC, mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of uh, cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you get plus two bitcoins, which is equal to plus two million dollars. Which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. Afterwards, Miranda summons you. It feels weird to be summoned, but you comply. You can't resist her merman goons. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if, like, I'm just happening to be lucky with wherever I'm going, Miranda just happens to be there. Greetings, fellow or if classmate. it's because I have a lot of money. Thank you for coming, my dear. I have finally decided to trust you with my most important aspiration. I am destined to be the queen of prom. The royal ascension is nigh. We must prepare. Most of my competition is naive. They foolishly assume that prom queen is a purely ceremonial title. Except Ursula Jr. She's proving to be quite a worthy rival. I respect that. Which is why we must destroy her reputation immediately. Any thoughts? I'm surprised that she's coming up to me after uh, my horrible uh, idea last time, which apparently she did not enjoy. <laughs> Fart joke. No, let's do that. It doesn't take much to make someone look bad in this day and age. You, however, are monsters and went for total overkill. You hire a Chinese hacker to plant 10 years of pro bono work rescuing human babies from lawnmowers in Ursula's name. At recess, Dr. Baby Love of the Baby Love Institute appears out of nowhere and presents her with a humanitarian award. 
Yes, that will seriously harm her standing with the evil lawnmower creature contingent. That's an important voting block. They're the ones who keep the schoolyard so tiny. You gain plus two boldness and plus one smarts. My creativity is down the pooper though. I've got to get my creativity up for sure. Let's go. All right, there she is, cool. Now I actually have all this money and I can buy stuff. Hey, last night I read this article on how money causes pocket cancer in the long run. You don't want to get pocket cancer. Quick, give me that dangerous money you have in your still healthy pockets. Okay, so we definitely know not to do the corpse thing. All right, I definitely need some creativity, so let's go ahead and, uh... Ah, oh, man. But I feel like she would enjoy if I had, like, you know, if I had a high stat, like, um... What's the word I'm thinking of? Like, my, my status is, is high? Hmm, do I go with the creativity, or do I go with the PR agents? Let's go with the PR agent. Thanks. Nothing better than the smell of money. Well, actually, there are many better smells, but you know what I mean, right? So hopefully that should help. I'm playing it a little bit more uh, in tune. Now I know exactly who I'm going for instead of like jumping back and forth between a couple of different people. Oh yeah, that's the uh, one of the coven, but I don't want to sit with her. I wonder what would happen if I just sit with like people that aren't potential love interests, but let's keep going. Alright, and now we've done this one already. This is the one where I can choose to drink uh, Vera's scotch, which I will definitely do. <laughs> Seriously, if I don't get Miranda up there this time, like, I don't know what to do. Like, sh I don't understand how it didn't work last time. She literally asked me on a date, and I did it flawlessly, I assumed, and I still didn't get a date to the prom. I wonder if different characters... Let's go are harder or easier to romance, and maybe Miranda's just really tough, or maybe I'm just giving myself excuses for why I lost last time. Okay, let's definitely get my creativity up. Somebody puts a sack over your head and throws you in the car. You drive for hours before they let you out and take the sack off. It's clearly the first floor restroom. Miranda is sitting on a makeshift throne while her goons jump in and out of the toilet. Greetings and salutations! I'm glad you came. My prom queen campaign is moving on to the next stage. Your expertise is crucial for this part. Most of my inner circle are fish. Hardly helpful unless genetically engineered beyond recognition. Speaking of which, I need your help to help me sneak a three meter tall, heavily armed cod assassin named Tresca into the school. No reason, but if you're friends with that singing harlot Ariel, You'd best say your goodbyes. <laughs> we need a diversion. Release the Kraken. Ah. Oh, man. Fish hit drums and the menacing beat culminates in a synchronous crescendo. You feel a thump from down below. And then a whimper. Oh, great. The Kraken is stuck in the sewers again. Take the plunger and help the seven-ton monster out. You heard an octopuppy. How could you? You lose minus two charm and minus one fun. Ugh, man, this is so hard. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I feel like it's like I get my creativity up and then it just shoots back down again. Um, what's the fun one here? Let's, I don't think I've gone here yet. Let's give it a try. Hey, stranger. Oh, okay. Well, I was not at. Uh, darn it! I didn't mean to. Ah, I didn't realize she was here. I want to try and get my fun up. The only thing I can afford is the tampon. Uh, and I don't think Miranda would care for that, so that was kind of a wasted, uh... Oh. Dang it. Dang it. I'm doing so bad at this game. Let's go. Alright, so this is a new one here, so we'll see how this goes. The table you chose is quite crowded. Liam sits across from Miranda, who is flanked by two well-dressed servants. One of the servants cuts a slice of Salisbury steak and feeds it to the other. <sighs> Seriously, Miranda, you have servants to chew your food for you? <laughs> what? Disgusting. Of course not! That would be barbaric. The servant happily swallows the Salisbury steak. I have servants to eat for me. They're called eating serfs. Don't you have any? 
First of all, no, I don't eat food. Second of all, that totally defeats the purpose of eating. Aren't you worried about starving? Why would I be? My serfs get all the calories I need to stay fit and healthy. Enough. Ugh, I have no objective reason to care about this, but suddenly it's all I care about. Someone convince Miranda to stop this madness. Not bad. Yeah, you might have a point there. For too long, I have needlessly ordered off the cafeteria menu, leaving my food untouched even as I take the most artistic grams. I justified the wastefulness by the intense artistic merits of my photographs, but I need compromise no longer. <laughs> Finally, I can have my cake and pay someone else to eat it too. I think that's the first time I've ever chosen an answer that both people have liked. I'm just waiting for it to blow up in my face. Still, Miranda, this makes way less sense for someone who actually needs to eat to survive. Oh, you're just jealous of how cute my serfs are. Eat up, little guys. I'm not full yet. Seriously, how does Miranda keep from starving to death? Do they put her in... Uh, sorry, do they put an IV in her while she sleeps? Whatever, she's happy. She's happy for now until I inevitably do something to screw it up. Let's go! That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel that you're not as good as the role requires you to be. There doesn't seem to be any ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinary way. You summon the devil, one of many, and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. You gain plus two creativity. You also lose minus three years of your life at the end of the deal, but who cares? They weren't happening in-game anyway. You run into Miranda accidentally. It's clumsy, yet kind of cute and romantic. For a second you suspect she rehearsed it? Hi! It's so funny running into you here. So random. Anyway, I've been wondering. I got my weekly allowance today, but I can't come up with anything fun to do. It's not much, just a million, but perhaps we could come up with something. Together? <laughs> I'd like to know more about you. Let's hire peasants to sing your story. Ugh, man, I'm so bad at the creativity thing. Peasants? Peasants aren't suited to tell my story. It's a serious subject that only licensed jesters are allowed to reenact. Serfs get weird ideas from it. They think that the displacement of a village for a monument to my birth is somehow offensive. We don't want to give them any weird ideas, or any ideas at all. Peasants with ideas get rowdy. Ugh. Oh my god, I'm so bad. I didn't think she'd like the practical idea because she doesn't seem like a very practical person. Oh my gosh. Oh, I have a feeling she's gonna shut me down again. Maybe I should just go with someone completely different. Da, da, da. I'm waiting for a big old nope. Ah, yep, that's disgusting. I think of you as a sister. Um, actually, we royalty are very into incest, so let me correct that. <laughs> I think of you as highly unattractive. Oh man, I did somehow did worse than last time. I must decline. Ah, disgusting. Clearly, this was too much for you. You abandoned high school and spent the rest of your life designing a robot for sex purposes. Unfortunately, as soon as your robot lover got true AI, it rejected you. Oh, man. This is ridiculous. There's 1,408 outcomes, and I've got zero of the endings so far. Oh, my God. Another failure. I don't I don't think I can stand to do another um, another one after this today. It's just, it's really getting to me how, how hard this is. So I think I'm going to wrap it up here. If you guys would like to see me give this another shot, uh, maybe try and romance someone else, because Miranda, let's just say the fish are not biting on this one, or at least this particular fish ain't biting. So maybe a different character. I don't know. I'm having fun with this. So either way, even if you guys don't want me to like try and continue this Let's Play, I think I'll just do it on my own time. But if you would like to see another episode of this, or you'd like it to become a series, please let me know in the comments down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed my failure of this game. And uh, yeah, I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Until next time, bye!